All right, let's practice doing inflection point stuff in Desmos. Here I have a function. It starts out with a nice cosine wave. It looks a lot like what I had just sketched in the uh, in the paper and pencil work. Um, I shifted it up some just because I felt like it. Um, and then I'm adding a second cosine wave at twice the frequency of the first wave just to make it a little more interesting. And I can adjust the amplitude of that second wave, give some nice shapes. Um, but let's leave it back here. So by eye, it kind of looks like a plain old cosine wave, right? So can we find the inflection points of it using Desmos? Uh, well, if I do f prime of x, how could I use that to talk about where the uh, where the inflection points are or where the original function is concave up or concave down? Because I want to turn this to blue and this to red because that's my color system blue or uh, blue for the original, red for the first derivative. So what can I say about where f is concave up or concave down um, based on the derivative? Well, f prime being increasing is a way of saying concave up. Is that our book's definition? So since Desmos has highlighted the min here and the max there, and the function is increasing all the, the f prime is increasing all the way between those, f f itself is concave up from here to there. Does that seem to agree with what it looks like? And then from here to there, f prime is decreasing, and that's where the original function is concave down. Okay, so far? So I can find the inflection points by in Desmos by asking where are the points where f prime switches from in, from um, decreasing to increasing, which is basically where it has mins or maxes, at least on this nice smooth graph. That's one way to find the inflection points. Um, are the inflection points halfway between the, the min here and the max there, halfway between 10 and 20? Well, no, 16.5 is not halfway between 10 and 20. So it's kind of close to halfway between, but there's no reason inflection points have to be exactly halfway between mins and maxes. Another way to think about inflection points is where is f double prime equal to zero? So let's do f double prime of x here. And let's give that some other color, um, I guess pencil color. Um, so what, how can I use f double prime to find candidate inflection points? We just said those are where f double prime is zero, and Desmos has highlighted this as a zero crossing of f double prime, which just happens, and probably not coincidence, to be where f prime has a local minimum. So another way to think of where the inflection points might be is to show f double prime and where that crosses zero. Um, you could uh, take the derivative of this function. It's not too hard, just a little bit of chain rule. Um, but then finding where that has local mins and maxes would be a pain in the neck um, and possibly even entirely impossible. Or you could take the second derivative, still not very hard by hand, and you could ask uh, where does that equal zero, and that again would be basically impossible. So for some functions we can find the inflection points by hand. For other, point, for other functions we have to just have something else compute f prime and f double prime for us and then look for inflection points that way.